Have you ever found yourself on the edge of your seat completely creeped out by a piece of music in a game? Well, you're certainly not alone. In fact, we're together here. There is strength in numbers, right? So let's consider some twisted tunes and what makes them so spine-tinglingly scary. Oof. For those more daring, try headphones and dim lights. For those who are cowards like me, crank up the light. Watch it in a public area, be prepared. Let's go on a strange journey through some of the darkest corners of video game music. And who knows, by the end of the video, you might just have a newfound appreciation for the power of fear in game soundtracks. Come along. Let's start with my own personal hellscape, Consumite Furore from Phantasmagoria. The song Consumite, I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this right. The song Consumite Furore for the PC game Phantasmagoria is a Latin hymn that is used in the particularly unsettling scenes in the game. Not that there's a few, there's quite a few going on in this game. There's a lot of messed up stuff. I hesitate even to show you clips from it. The game's most chilling moments are accompanied by the haunting hymn, Consumite Furore. It's a Latin chant that translates to consume my rage. What? A little edgy, a little creepy, but why is this song so unnerving? The answer lies in the combination of the lyrics, the context, and the music. The slow, deliberate melody of the Gregorian chant creates an eerie and unsettling atmosphere, while the minor key adds a haunting quality that lingers long, long after the game has ended. Minor keys tend to have a darker, sadder, and more melancholic feel compared to major keys. Minor keys are often associated with sadness, and grief, and tragedy. For example, many funeral dirges and laments are written in minor keys, and so our brains are wired to associate these things, to associate these types of music with feelings of loss and despair. Minor keys are less commonly used in popular music, which can make them stand out more and create a sense of unfamiliarity or even alienation for the listener. When combined with other unsettling elements like dissonant harmonies or ominous melodies, a piece of music in a minor key can create a truly unnerving experience. This in mind, what is music without visual content in a video game? It's the scenes in which the song is used that truly cements its place as one of the most disturbing games in video game history. As the player confronts the game's gruesome violence, the rep Repetition of the song on a loop serves to underscore the brutality, making it feel like an endless nightmare. You know when you hear the song kick up again, you're back into that nightmare. You're probably shifting in your seat as you anticipate the macabre that's about to unfold. As you listen to Consumite Furore, it's impossible not to feel a sense of unease and discomfort. It's a reminder of the power of music to evoke emotions and create an atmosphere that can be both beautiful and terrifying. The Gigas Battle theme from Earthbound. The Gigas Battle theme from Earthbound is not for the faint of heart. This eerie and unsettling piece of music is a perfect reflection of the terror and horror that players face during the final boss battle against Gigas. Gigas, Gigas, whatever. From its dissonant and discordant melody to its glitchy and distorted sound effects, this music creates an atmosphere of utter dread and just general discomfort. But the music's shifting tempo only adds to the feeling of unpredictability and chaos. As the player struggles to defeat Gigas, Gigas, whatever, they are constantly bombarded with a barrage of unsettling sounds and again ominous melodies that make you feel like they are losing control. And that's not even the worst part. That, that's not even the worst part. The journey you've been on and given the relatively spare details and backstory of Gigas only makes this battle even more intense. Throughout the game, players are given hints that Gigas is an incredibly powerful and malevolent force that they must eventually face and overcome. The story is constantly building the threat of Gigas and the music in the final battle mirrors this, stirring up a sense of dread and anticipation patient for the final battle against this seemingly unbeatable foe. If you're stalwart enough to make it to the final challenge, be warned. The Gigas battle theme is not something you'll soon forget. Regardless of your win, it'll haunt you long after the game is over, leaving you questioning what horrors may be lurking just out of sight, despite your recent thwarting of a cosmic foe. This is such an incredible game, it's just ugh, gross how good this game is. And the song matches it. Lavender Town. Imagine that you're wandering through a quiet town, surrounded by tombstones and grieving trainers. The only sound is the haunting melody of a slow, repetitive tune 
played on a synthesized instrument. This is the Lavender Town theme from the original Pokemon games, Blue and Red. Known for its eerie and unsettling tone that has captured the attention of many fans. As you explore the town, you begin to feel a sense of unease. You realize that Lavender Town is a location in the Pokemon games that is associated with death and mourning. The music sets the tone for the somber and mournful atmosphere of the town, making you feel like you're walking through a ghostly world. It's creepy. But there's more to this story besides just music and context. There's a popular urban legend that the Lavender Town theme caused a number of Japanese children to become ill and even commit suicide when the game was first released. While there is no evidence to support this claim, it has contributed to the theme's reputation as being unsettling and disturbing. The Lavender Town theme is a reminder that even in a colorful and vibrant world like Pokemon, there are darker and more unsettling elements lurking beneath the surface. The combination of the music, the context, and this urban legend has helped create a lasting impression of the Lavender Town theme as a chilling, truly chilling piece of music. The Sweet Home Lobby Music Sweet Home is a survival horror role-playing game developed and published by Capcom for the NES. The Famicom, really. It came out in Japan in 1989, but years later, we got a fan translation. It was one of the first games in the survival horror genre and was heavily inspired by horror movies, particularly The Evil Dead. The game takes place in an abandoned mansion where a team of five documentary filmmakers and a painter have gone to explore the mansion and search for hidden frescoes. However, they soon discover that the mansion is haunted by supernatural entities that they must fight to survive and escape. The gameplay involves exploring the mansion, solving puzzles, and fighting monsters using a turn-based combat system, like a normal turn-based combat RPG system like Final Fantasy. The game features multiple endings and permadeath, meaning that, you know, if a character dies, buddy, they're gone. They're true deuces. They're done. Despite being a relatively unknown game outside of Japan, Sweet Home is considered to be an absolute cult classic and has been credited as a major influence on later survival horror games such as the Resident Evil series. Do you want to experience true horror? Look no further than the lobby music track from the NES game Sweet Home. This haunting and unsettling piece of music will leave you feeling tense and uneasy. And here's why. The dissonant melody makes your skin crawl as the notes clash and create an eerie otherworldly atmosphere. It's poof. The slow tempo will make you feel like time is standing still, adding to the tension, adding to the unease. But it's not just the music that's terrifying. Sweet Home is a horror game that features a lot of supernatural elements and disturbing imagery, and the lobby music track in the game's main hub area amplifies this sense of dread and foreboding throughout the entire Entire game. To make matters worse, the lobby music track doesn't even have a traditional melody to follow. Instead, it's a series of unsettling sounds and notes that do not harmonize. They don't work together. This lack of structure can make you feel disoriented and on edge, never knowing what's coming next, much like you're walking through a haunted house. So if you're brave enough to face the horrors of Sweet Home, be sure to check out the lobby music track. If you're a fan of retro gaming, theories, value of video games, hit that subscribe button. Much less spooky. The Guardian Battle theme from Breath of the Wild. Prepare to have your heart racing and your palms sweating. This intense and unsettling piece of music will have you on the edge of your seat during battles with the game's mechanical enemies, the Guardians. The dissonant melody creates a sense of tension and unease while the aggressive percussion adds to the sense of urgency and danger. And that's fair, because they're dangerous, especially when you don't know what you're doing. And of course, for every first time player, you don't know what you're doing. With a fast and frenetic tempo, the music will have you feeling panicked and anxious as you try to defeat these pretty difficult foes. Whether you're a seasoned gamer or new to the world of Breath of the Wild, the Guardian battle theme is sure to leave you with a lasting impression of the game's challenging and intense battles. In Breath of the Wild, the Guardians are ancient mechanical weapons created by an advanced civilization known as the Sheikah. They were designed to protect the land of Hyrule from danger, but something went wrong and the Guardians turned on the people of Hyrule instead. The Guardians are powerful enemies that can shoot powerful lasers from their eyes that can deal massive, massive damage to the player. They're equipped with powerful legs that allow them to quickly chase and corner the player, and their durable exterior makes them really difficult to defeat. Throughout the game, players must face off against various types of guardians, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. Some are stationary, will only attack when the player gets close, others will actively pursue them, with this music just cranked in the background. 
The Guardians represent a major threat in Breath of the Wild, and they can pose a significant challenge to players. The intense and unsettling Guardian battle theme serves to underscore that danger and that difficulty that these enemies bring and creates a sense of panic in people when they hear the trill of those piano notes. The mystery of the effect of these soundtracks is as unique to the individual as is the experience that have led us here. Consider some of these possibilities as to why these certain songs can give us goosebumps and send shivers down our spines. But remember, the true solution to coping with this is either to appreciate it or just subvert it, man. Turn it off. Just turn it off. If you find yourself on edge while playing your favorite game, maybe being equipped with a better understanding of what's going on in our brains can teach us to appreciate these spooky soundtracks or condition us to just avoid them. Either way, you're the one in the driver's seat, so recognize your power and act appropriately. Turn it off if you have to. Crank it up if you need to. I hope this helps you to understand some of the, the weirdness that we get when we hear some of these songs. I think it's incredibly important to, to think about these things and be aware of how it affects us. If you'd like to see some more content like this, make sure you subscribe. After all, gaming discourse is important. We should continue.